it was tradition that the eldest daughter would marry someone from, the, from her father's side of the family. And Sayyidah Zainab radiallahu really liked the Asim ibn Rabia radiallahu who was from her mother's side of the family. And the Prophet sallallahu was not about to break his daughter's heart over a stupid tradition. Because that was the fatherhood of the Prophet sallallahu and they were so unique in Arabian society. So much so that Abu Lahab came and was like, oh my God, what did you do? The next two girls have to marry from the father's side of the family. And they married from the father's side of the family. And they all moved out. And so now she starts to consider marriage for herself. And the Prophet ﷺ knows who she likes. He knows his daughter as well. He would never break his daughter's hearts. SubhanAllah. These other people come and propose and they're like, Prophet ﷺ is like, no, thanks, but no thanks. Until Sayyidina Ali radiallahu anh, people are like, we think he likes you. He's like, but what am I supposed to do? And mind you, Ali radiallahu anh, didn't have a lot of money. We talked about how Sayyidah Khadija radiallahu anha gave away all of her wealth. That was the wealth of the Prophet sallallahu wealth as well. And Fatima radiallahu anha's wealth as well. They didn't have money left. Sayyidina Ali radiallahu anha didn't have a lot of money. He grew up in the household of the Prophet sallallahu They grew up together. They were really close. You could say they were childhood friends. And subhanAllah, he goes to the Prophet sallallahu house and he just goes and he stands in front of the Prophet sallallahu and just loses his nerve and just sits there. How are you supposed to go to the Prophet and say, like, can I marry your daughter? Like, how are you supposed to do that? <laughs> Until the Prophet and looks at him and says, did you need something, Ali? And then he's like, right, so funny, subhanAllah. And then he's like, yeah, we're asking about Fatima. And the Prophet says, ahlan wa sahlan. Like, okay, you're welcome. And then he's like, he just got up and left. He didn't even know what to do next. <laughs> so then they told him, like, no, no, go back. Go back and officially propose. He already told you, it's okay. So he goes back and he proposes to Sayyidina Fatima radiallahu anha, officially proposes. And the Prophet ﷺ says, do you have something to give her as a gift? He's like, I don't have anything. He didn't, he didn't have wealth. And the Prophet ﷺ said, remember, you had this zetter, you had, you had this shield. You have one thing, go get that one thing. <laughs> So he goes, gets the one thing, and he comes back. And also, like, I'm trying to imagine, say the Fatima al is like, hey, I got my dowry is a shield. <laughs> but so indicative of her life, subhanAllah. They sell the shield, and she ends up with one pillow, one cover. Her house is so simple. So simple. SubhanAllah. And she marries Sayyidina Ali radiallahu anhu. And there's a moment where Sayyidina Ali radiallahu anhu tell, is thinking about taking a second wife, because this was normal for the Arabs at the time. Say the Fatima is like, mm -mm. you are not doing that. <laughs> she goes and she complains to her father. And her father actually goes to Sayyidina Ali radiallahu anhu. He's like, you know, Al-Asr ibn Rabi'a, Zainab's husband, wasn't even Muslim. And when I told him he wasn't allowed to take a second wife, like he was down with it. And then he tells him, Fatima minni, Fatima's bid'atun minni is a part of me. What hurts her, hurts me. And Sayyidina Ali radiallahu is like, I will not do anything that will harm her. Their house in Medina, subhanAllah, when you go to, has, who's been to Medina? Anyone? Medina. So the Prophet ﷺ is buried in Hujrat Aisha radiallahu in the house of Aisha radiallahu and their rooms, they were, um, what is now a large walk-in closet is the size of their rooms, that was their houses. And they had a row of houses, the mothers of the believers, anhunna, and Sayyidina Fatima and Sayyidina Ali radiallahu anhum also had a small house. The Prophet ﷺ, on his way to Fajr, he would call out to them. And he says, it's time for Fajr. He says, and he recites the ayah of some Surah Al-Ahzab, ayah number 33, where he says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to remove any, any, like, any evil from you, O family of the Prophet ﷺ. Come wake up, come to Fajr. They were neighbors, they, they were right next to each other. And she would have a disagreement with Sayyidina Ali radiallahu anhu, they're a young couple. We have this idea of like, the perfect marriage doesn't have challenges. You argue about stuff. The best couple in the world fights over the thermostat. Every couple fights over the thermostat. <laughs> SubhanAllah. And the Prophet sallallahu they, like, they had this discussion once and she was frustrated with him and he went to pray in the went and fell asleep in the masjid and the Prophet sallallahu woke him up. He's like, Qum ya Aba Turab, <laughs> get up, the one who covered in dirt, come on, get up. What's going on? What's wrong with you and Fatima radiallahu anha? And he goes and he reconciles between them. SubhanAllah. One of the days, their things got really difficult because they, they didn't have wealth. Sayyidina Fatima radiallahu anha asked, he, her husband told her, he's like, ask your father if we can get support, if we can get like a, someone to come help us at home. 
And she went to her father and then she lost her nerve and came back. She's like, I couldn't ask him. So he's like, I'll go ask. So then he goes back and they ask him and the Prophet ﷺ says, I can't give you when there are people that are hungry, when Ahl al-Sufa don't have to eat. So Ahl al-Sufa was essentially a homeless shelter in the, the masjid of the Prophet ﷺ, where anyone that didn't have anywhere else to go went to the masjid. This is what our masajid should be. It should be the place where people, when people are in need, they should know to just come to the masjid. And the Prophet ﷺ told them, I can't give you wealth when Ahl al-Sufa don't have to eat. And then it hurt his heart. He said, I, I can't. He just turned down his daughter. It hurt him. So he went back to them and he told them, let me give you something that's better. After every salah, say, SubhanAllah, Alhamdulillah, la ilaha, uh, sorry, SubhanAllah, Alhamdulillah, Allahu Akbar, 10 times each. And before you go to sleep, say, SubhanAllah, Alhamdulillah, and Allahu Akbar, 33, 33, and 34 times each. And Sayyidina Ali, radiallahu 30 years later, he said, we never, like, we never missed a night. Every single time. Every single time. SubhanAllah. 